Welcome to the next video in the Patterns in Nature topic. Today's video will be looking at the dot point, explain the relationship between the shape of leaves, distribution of tissues in them, and their role. So the shape of an arrangement of leaves usually helps to maximize the exposure of the cells to light in order to be able to photosynthesize. They may be angled so that the top side re receives the maximum exposure to the sun, as this is where most of the photosynthetic cells are found. Okay, so we can see here in a simple photo of a eucalyptus tree that the leaves hang vertically and the shape is nice and tapered so we get that nice uh, exposure to the top of the leaf in order to capture as much sun as possible. So most leaves are broad, thin and flat like in this top picture here in order to increase the surface area for maximum light absorption. So obviously the broader the surface, the more light the, the leaf is able to capture in order to carry out photosynthesis. In hot dry conditions, however, leaves need to reduce the surface area to minimize water loss. So what happens is the leaves become long and skinny and almost look like spines, like in this picture down the bottom here. The veins on the leaves are made up of the conducting system of the leaf, which includes the xylem and phloem vessels, which we've talked about a little and we'll be looking at in a little bit more detail later on. But they're the structures within the plant that carry either the water or the products of photosynthesis. So this here shows a cross section of a leaf with the different tissue types that are found in there. So what we're going to go through now is go through each of these different uh, tissue types or cell types and talk about what they are what sort of job they have in maintaining the function of the leaf so the cuticle is a waxy water repellent layer that covers all of the above ground areas of the plant so basically the top and the bottom of the leaf is covered with this cuticle and that's why if you drop uh, droplets of water on a leaf usually it will just fall little pellets and then it will run off so this stops uh, the water too much water from entering the leaf but it also has the effect of stopping water from leaving the leaf and causing it to dry out next we have our palisade cells these contain a large vacuole as we can see that large white space in the middle here which okay uh, which helps to keep the leaf rigid and provides structure for the whole leaf so the vacuole contains mostly air also does contain uh, water but when the when the leaves have enough water these vacuoles push out against the sides of the cell and provide it with that rigid structure as we can see here the palisade cells also contain lots of chloroplasts which are these little black dots around the outside so they are uh, integral in the process of photosynthesis okay also they contain a lot more chloroplasts because they are found closer to the surface of the leaf so obviously they're going to come in contact with a lot more sunlight then our next uh, group of cells are our spongy mesophyll cells mesophyll cells which are found here beneath the palisade cells uh, which also undergo photosynthesis because we can see the number of chloroplasts within each but they also have these air spaces in between them, which allow easy gas exchange. So the carbon dioxide that's required for photosynthesis can easily move into the cells and the oxygen that's produced can easily move out. So those uh, air spaces open up into these substomatal air spaces. So these act as a diffusion chamber and allows the rapid diffusion of carbon dioxide and other gases in and out of the plant cells. So we know that we need uh, plenty of carbon dioxide for photosynthesis to take place, but we also need to get rid of the oxygen uh, as the plant doesn't require all of it, so it needs to go back out into the atmosphere. We also have the epidermis. So the epidermis protects the leaf and is transparent to let light through. So that's found on both the upper and the lower surface of the plant, or of the leaf, sorry. And lastly, we have the stomata. So the stomata is actually an opening in the surface of the leaf that opens and closes to allow gas exchange. On either side of the stomata are guard cells, which help to regulate or guard, hence their name, the stomata opening depending on water supply. So when there's lots of water in the plant, the guard cells 
uh, pull apart from one another and allow gas exchange to take place freely. However, when uh, the plant doesn't have much water, the guard cells become limp and flaccid and they push into one another and close the stomatal opening. So the biggest issue that plants have to deal with is uh, the loss of water, uh, especially when they're undergoing gas exchange. So the guard cells are really important in order to make sure that the plant doesn't lose too much water while also trying to maintain gas exchange in order to carry out photosynthesis. And we'll be having a look, little bit more uh, of a look at the importance of water in our plants and how it's essential that our guard cells really work uh, in conjunction with the stomata in order to make sure that we don't lose too much water during that process of gas exchange. And that brings us to the end of today's video. Thank you for watching.